is. Today I will talk about these uh, several sections. Uh, the first one we talk about is uh, the background of the leads and what kinds of leads we did here, and the architecture, and then the imp uh, implementation issues. And then I will talk about what kinds of attack and what kind of defense leads can provide. And finally, I will talk about how to secure the Linux kernel with the leads and, and then a summary. And uh, if any one of you have any question during my talk, you can just raise your hand. I can answer the question uh, in the middle. <coughs> All right, let's begin. About the attack and defense, is that attacks and, uh, and defenses uh, that uh, leads this mitigates or against this? Uh, Alright, uh, there are attacks against leads and attacks against the system. They are both. So what will you be talking about? Yeah, yeah I, I will talk about the attack to the leads and the attack to the kernel and the attack to the system that uh, leads can provide what kind of measures that can prevent this attack. Okay, so, so will you be talking about attacks, attacks against leads? Yes. If I have a system that's on, that has blades on it. Yes. Okay. All right. Here's the background. And uh, I will talk about very quickly about this background kind of things. The very first one we, uh, we talk about is the programs and, uh, okay, the problems and current solutions to, to the, uh, to this uh, problem. Um, we, we, we face uh, these uh, internet ages, and but we have seen a lot of hosts, hosts being hacked and defaced, and all the information being leaked and stolen, kind of things. And there are lots of wounds and viruses spreading about this world, like the COVID and the Linda kind of things. And there are lots of vulnerability found every day. Even the very secure software like OpenSSH and Apache. Recently, they found a very serious bug. So, what kinds of problem that we have made this uh, program, uh, made this problem occur? Uh, even we have used some of the secure software like OpenSSH and OpenSSL kind of things, but we cannot prevent all about all of these pro pro problems. The reason for this is that the application software are, right now are not trustworthy because more and more complicated implementation because you have to meet the customer's requirements and you have to add more features to this software and the software became, uh, be became more and more complicated and you cannot avoid any, uh, you, you cannot avoid the the bug in the software, so the application software is, is not trustworthy. So you have to find a way to make this application, this this uh, untrustworthy application software became, uh, uh, became secure. And the kernel is not trustworthy. It means that I can, I can just uh, insert modules into the Linux kernel, and I can intercept all the system call, and I can do whatever things I want to do, even if the upper application layer, the application software is secure. And the third one is access control is not perfect. It means that right now, being a root or super user, you can do anything you want. You, you, be, you become a, a god in the system. So you can, uh, if you can fire a remote exploit code or, or, or use the local exploit, and you can become a root and you can do anything you want. So it's not perfect right now with the access control. Okay, the solution right here with the leads with our solution is um, we need a trusty kernel. This kernel can protect the kernel itself. It means that uh, nobody can uh, modify the kernel. Nobody can intercept the system call. Nobody can uh, change it. And also this kernel would also provide this uh, Mac, Mac is um, mandatory access control, and this uh, this Mac is not uh, is different from what we have used in the Unix environment right now, and uh, it is the, 
it, it means that no one can change the Mac rules, but somebody can change the uh, the rules that right now the Unix environment use. For example, if uh, you can you can you can change the file. You can use change more to change the file to you can uh, just uh, say change somebody everybody can read it or everybody can write it, right? But as a root, you can change an anything. So this is not very secure. But with the Mac, with the mandatory access control, no one can change these rules even if as a root or super user. And with this Mac, you can implement the least privileged rules. It means that if, um, for example, uh, for the etc password, this file is um, install, uh, contain all the password in this file. Right now, everybody can read it because you need to read the password for the user to log in. But after logging, you never. This file is not is not useful to the to the users. So you can just uh, make the login program to read this. Uh, password file it, and nobody can read it right now so it means that nobody can read this uh, etc password except the login program right now the least privilege can implement with this um, um, mandatory access control all right the history of the leads just uh, from the is a uh, about two years, uh, about three years projects, and and we have um, uh, a lot of developer to help this uh, project. Especially the core developer Philip Bondi, he'll be here, I guess, and he had a talk yesterday. And also we have a FAQ maintainer Steve Bremer, and I guess he will be he he also be dev content. And there's another FAQ maintainer Sandy Cray. All of these people help the leads projects to to be growing. And we have add capability rules and lightweight Mac in the 2000. Uh, and uh, before, uh, in March of the, this year, we have also add LSM uh, based versions. LSM is a Linux security module, and we be added to the kernel 2.5 right now. I guess maybe in the next one or two months, all the all these uh, LSM or Linux security modules will be added in the kernel. And we just talk about the background. And next we talk about the architecture that leads race on. The, the architecture here, there is a, there's a, there's a map here. All right. Leads contains several uh, components. The core one is this access control models, and it contains the uh, access control database, and it contains uh, an administration interface, and it contains uh, a, a whole checking centers. And when the user program, when the user program, I think no. When the user program uh, begin to uh, exactly in the system. He will fork and he will use the fork and execv this exactly v to uh, to to execute. And right now the access control database will attach his uh, attach the access control list to the process. And when he try to access something, he will uh, the the lead will check with the access database and then to determine if he can let this uh, uh, access continue or not. And we have divided the system into two categories. The one is subject and the other is object. And we place a checking between this subject and object. The subject is a process and the object is all kinds of resources such as a file, device, and all kinds of things that the process would like to access. And we have a lot to log everything that uh, maybe is, is related to the security. We have also an, an administration interface that you can manipulate the access control database. The features with the leads is that leads is a kernel patches. 
It's a Linux kernel patch. Maybe in the future, it will be the Linux security kernel modules. And he's, uh, he implements a trusty kernel. And he has the light white Mac in the kernel. And he has the admin, admin tools. He include these admin, admin tools use the IP chains like rules that is maybe easier to use for the users. And here we show an example. Wow, it's not very clear. Uh, say if you have uh, logged into a system, you get, uh, you use the local exploit code or remote exploit code to get a root. And right now you want to try to uh, get the shadow or get the password file. Right now it just do the cat etc shadow at the very first um, line. And then but before that, as a root, you can do anything. So you can you can see the shadow file, you can see all the contents, but right now you, you, you can just, uh, the system will return as an operation not permitted. You cannot see the shadow file. You cannot cap the shadow file right now with the leads. And for the, from the log, the leads we, we tell that somebody and uh, with the UID, what kind of UID, GID, and what kinds of uh, uh, program try to access this uh, shadow file. And just another example is if you try to uh, insert something, insert the modules into the kernel, maybe use the rootkit, some, some kinds of rootkit, and right now the leads will tell you that operation is not permitted, even if you are you as a root. And just talk about the architecture, and next we talk about the implementation. Do you have any question about this section? No? Okay, let's continue. Uh, all right, leads actually include several components and include to, uh, enable to, in order to implement these, um, uh, these components, we have several uh, very important structures. Here, the very first one is a secure IMO. This one is a global, global um, uh, uh, access control list. It means that everybody and any resource need to use this, uh, uh, need to check this uh, uh, ACL first. And we, and there's a lead sys ACL in the, also in the kernel. And this structure, apply to individual process. It means that every process in the kernel got this uh, lead sys ACL. It, it includes uh, all the rules, all the privileges that this process can uh, got. <clears throat> and all these uh, uh, structures got uh, uh, two um, significant, uh, sig significant structure here is the uh, INO, this is INO number and the DV number. This INO number and DV number identify a single uh, file name or, or directory name or the device name kind of things. And we have also capabilities. And we have also the, all the ACL that this uh, process contain. And this is a task structure in the Linux kernel structure, in the Linux kernel. This task structure is when you when the process is in a kernel, this process has a task structure, an only task structure to identify this process. And we have, for the leads, we add one, we have add a pointer in this task structure with the lead system ACL. This means that when the uh, process uh, running under the lead LIDS control, he would got uh, this lead system ACL structures and he would have this uh, this structure we told him that uh, what kinds of uh, access or control list that this process got and what kinds of things he can do or he cannot do. And here we, we just go into the uh, program and see um, when, when you do a fork in the program and what leads do is he would inherit all the access control lists, all the access uh, ACL from, the, from his parents. And you can see when you do the fork, we have the copy leads, sys, ACL, this uh, uh, function to, to copy all everything from the parents. And after you do a fork, 
maybe you can you do the EXECV to actually execute this program. And from when you do the do EXECV, we have lead set ACLs to set all the ACL that he gets from this program. So when a program is in a system, he would got two ACL. One is inherited inherits from his parents. Another one is get from itself. For example, if a program in ABC program, this program got uh, have the privilege to to read uh, password file. But you use another program to execute this program. The other problem is his parents. He got when it, when this ABC running, he got the he got the privilege, he got the ACL from his parents, and also he got the ACLs from itself, from the ACLs that he got. And after we have all the checking and all the uh, process attaching kind of things, right now we, we will see a system call that we have the checkpoint. Uh, for example, there is so an example is the change mode. When you use, use chmod, this uh, uh, this system call, we have we have uh, intercept, we have adding this uh, checking in this system call in the kernel. Um, you can see that this is uh, if the red line one here is, uh, we add if please check base. When this uh, function do is you check all everything that this program got and he will check, he will make sure that if this process had the privilege to do the change mode to the destination file. And if he's, he do not get this privilege, he would, uh, we have a lock here, lead security alert, and he would uh, lock everything that attempt to do this change mode. And here we see, we say this function list check base. Here we have this list check base function, and this function is do is checking all the ACL database to see if this, uh, if this uh, first we check if the destination file, uh, you can change that. Uh, if anybody can change the destination file, if not, he will check if the program try to do the chmod, the change mode, had the privilege to do the change mode to, the des to this destination file. If he's not, he would just uh, deny it and just return. All right, does anybody have question about this section? No, all right. Uh, just now we just talked about imp implementation issues. Actually, uh, all these um, uh, implementation kind of things, we have a how-to, but it's kind of obsolete. So I guess maybe in the future I will, I will write another how-to to talk about these implementation issues. And next one, we talk about attack and defense with the leads. The very first one is we will attack, we will attack the leads and the main password. In the leads, we have uh, we have super user, right? The super user cannot do things that he can do before. So, but in order to uh, admin all kinds of this uh, access list control, you, you have to got the super super users that he can do the privilege. He can do everything that the root can do before. Uh, in order to be become this super super user, you have the pass. You have to got a password. This password is in store in the kernel. So s somebody will say that if I can get the password, I can do anything, right? But this password, we have several defenses. The first one is this password is uh, 116, 116 bits, MD5 is hard to guess. And another one, the second one, is the most important one that we have the restricted login TTY. It means that if, even if you got, you know the password, if you just log in from the remote host, maybe you, you, you get a remote exploit code, you get a root from the remote site. But right now, 
even if you know the password, you cannot just become this super, super user because we check the TTY. We, we check if you just log in from local or log in from remote, remote sites or log in from a series port. We can define this, uh, 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 these restrictions when you, when you compile the kernel. And there's an, another way to modify the kernel's structure, the kernel's data, uh, is, is use the, the raw I.O., the raw devices, just write, maybe modify the, the hard disk uh, uh, through the I.O. Uh, operations. But right now, all the I.O. operation is controlled by this cap, sys, raw I.O. capability. This capability has been disabled by default. So if you want to use, uh, if you want to change the kernel by this uh, DVK memory or DVK code, you cannot just write to these uh, devices because this cap sys row IO has been disabled. The second one we show that there's a lot of trojan, a lot of rootkits and sensitive information leaking in this uh, current uh, years. Uh, the, the tag is included the, the Trojan. The first Trojan, if if I can log in the system, I can modify this bin login, and I, I put the Trojan in this uh, program. And next time, when I log in, I, I will not use the password, right? And the log clean, maybe I just uh, will clean all the log because they will log something in the in this uh, log directory. And we have the password. You can just uh, store the password etc shadow file and, and you can use the other password cracking tools to crack it. And for the modules, you can insert, insert or, or remove the modules from the kernel and you can just uh, uh, insert some uh, rootkits in the kernel and you can modify the system core. And there's lots of kernel rootkits that can help you to hide your process, to hide your file. But the defense by the LIDS is that we can use file system protection first. This file system protection first uh, protection is implemented as a lead and is is in the VFS layer. It's a virtual file system layer, and he had the read only. You can set a file to only read only that nobody can just write to it. For example, for this bin login, you can just say you can just set a rule that made the login to be read only. And in this case, nobody can write to it, nobody can change it. And for the log, you can just set it to a pen. So uh, every, every log uh, can append to this uh, log file, but you cannot write it. And there's another mode is deny access. You can just set a file to deny access. It means that nobody can see this file when he do the LIS or just uh, modify this file. Uh, the example for this deny access is that you can set the etc shadow as a hidden file, so nobody can see it. And the modules operation, you can pre prevent insert more or remove modules from the kernel before you, if you have you 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 are root. But right now, because all the modules uh, operation is controlled by this cap sys modules. This modules has been de disabled by default by the leads, so you cannot do anything to the modules right now. We saw a lock here, and when you do the insert mode, and the leads, we saw there's a lock here. It means uh, that we saw that which person and violate this cap system modules. So you can increase the the kernel security by this way. And the next one is um, LD, this, uh, this, this low uh, uh, LD preload kind of, uh, uh, the, this one, this LD preload can insert the malicious code um, in a process when, when, when this program runs. Um, so in this case, if this program get uh, privilege from the leads, and I can just uh, uh, compile a, a preload library, and I can I can just insert this library. Uh, I can use preload uh, LD preload and run 
run with this uh, uh, privileged program. And because the, this privileged program, maybe he can, he can uh, read the password file. Right now, I can write this uh, library with the LDP low, and I, I can do anything as this privileged program. This bug is discovered by the Tesla team in the early this year, and we have a solution is that we check the LD in the environment P, because all the LD pillows is in the environment pointer. You can just check one by one, and we, we, we just check this LD and, and, and underscore, and we check if there's any LD kind of things. When the program is executed, we just clear all the ACL, so it means that you can still use LD preload, but you cannot get the um, ACL, the leech ACL. So in this case, it made the system more uh, usable and more secure. Another one is that we have also a very lightweight shellcode detection in the kernel. Um, you know, a lot of local exploit code, we use the shellcode to get a shell. And this shell code we provide as a, a pa parameters to the program or as an environment uh, to, to this program. And what we, what we defense is we check the shell code is very uh, easy. We just check uh, some of the ca some, some of the piece of the shell code in the environment P or the, uh, or the arguments in the environment or the uh, argument C. In this way, we can prevent shell code in parameters and environments. Uh, some of the examples is that uh, I, I, I just run uh, this X lock exploit code. You can find this one in the, uh, uh, on the internet. And, and when leads is on, when I run the sh uh, this exploit code, the local exploit code, and leads can find it, and he, he will say the shell code detected when uh, executed this file and program terminated. It means that when the program is running with, with the shell code in the parameters or in the environment, leads can just terminate this program and the local exploit code. We can, in, in this way, we can, prevent, uh, we can prevent some of the um, Exploit code, but it's not all of them because if the shell code, we, because we just check, we, we we just check a piece of the shell code, just like if you uh, uh, just like the system call uh, kind of things. Uh, the next attack is a dynamic runtime kernel modification. This attack you can find in Freak magazine. Uh, 58 uh, is very recent one, and you can uh, they provide a message to modify the kernel code through this uh, uh, K code or this uh, DV K memory, and he can pr he can modify the kernel's one time state of uh, the data. Uh, in order to do, do to do this, he had to uh, write to this uh, pro proxy K code to this file and or this uh, DV can memory, he have to have the ability to write. So right now, the leads, what leads can do is, he can defend it is just by this, uh, we have talked about it, just by this cat sys row IO. This row IO is the capability that he had disabled by default. He control everything to uh, access, uh, access to this uh, uh, row IO file, include the hard disk, include all the uh, uh, drivers, all the all the row I/O devices, and we have the so the lock here. As example here is that uh, when you try to do this um, write to this K, uh, DEV K memory, uh, the leads we terminal the system call and return an error and lock this uh, uh, operation. Say you have you have violated this cap system row I/O, so you can prevent this kind of attack. All right, we just talked about the tech and the defense is with the leads. And next we talk about this, uh, how to build a secure Linux with leads. Uh, 
all this information you can find on the uh, on our website is www.lids.org. But right now, the, it's, and you can you can get all the FAQ and all the how to on the website. Uh, first of all, you need to get a vanilla kernel from the www.kernel.org, and or and it's me. A lot of people just send email to me, said, "Why I cannot use Red Hat's kernel to patch? Because we do not support Red Hat's kernel. We, because uh, we, right now we only support the vanilla kernel. It's, it's easier for us to maintain it." Uh, so you have to download the kernel from the from this website, and you need the kernel. After you do that, you can download the kernel patch or this kernel patch from our website and all the tools. And if you want to use Linux security modules, you can just go to this lsm.immunix.org. And after that, you can just after you you tar uh, you untar this uh, kernel kernel uh, kernel source, you can do the patch, do the use the patch pro. Uh, uh, Program to to patch with our pet with, with these leads and yes the last one after you patch the leads with the vanilla kernel you can do we configure the kernel you have to make use make menu config as config or config to we configure the kernel there are several options in the kernel uh, in the leads and you can define you can decide if you want to use it. And after that, you can rebuild the kernel and just install the kernel and compile and install all the lead tools, including these leads admin tools and the lead com tools. And we have the default ACL setting by default, but maybe you need to do uh, add the new ACL by yourself. The several directory, important directory for, for leads. The very first one is etc leads. This directory include all the leads.com, leads.net, and leads.pw file. This file will be, uh, will be read when the kernel blew up, and he read everything in the kernel. And this directory is protected by leads by default. It say you cannot uh, uh, go into this directory, you cannot change this directory, uh, anything you cannot do this. Uh, you, you cannot do anything to this directory if you you are not a super super users. And there's a tools leads conf. This this tools is used to um, uh, manipulate the uh, access control list. Uh, you can just say it, leads conf. I need a program. This is a subject the program. I need. I I want to. I want this program can read a file or write a file. The that's all is an uh, object, and you can just say there's several options here, and you can uh, also use the list com to uh, configure the capability, uh, and with this inheritor level kind of things. The list uh, uh, admin is used to uh, do some administration uh, tasks. For example, if you want to enable or disable leads uh, on the uh, on the machine, you can just uh, log in and and do this uh, uh, leads dash s and and dash leads. Here it, you you need to provide a password and then uh, the leads can be disabled. And and you need to this uh, dash i is this to seal the kernel. Uh, this seal the kernel means that after I stop everything, I need. I need a program. I need the SSD kind of things. After I do everything, I stop. Uh, I finish stop the the machine, and I do this uh, dash i, and I can see the kernel. And right now the kernel is unbreakable. You cannot insert the modules. You cannot do anything to the kernel itself right now. Uh, there's a very good FAQ in our website. Um, anything it contain. The pro, uh, you, maybe if you have any question, you can just uh, check this FAQ first. Right now we have, uh, after you install the leads, you have, uh, right now we, we can see some testing. All right. After we build the system, you see the kernel, you do the more prop leads if you have used leads as a modules. And you do the leads dash i, this means that you have uh, 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 see the kernel, 
and from the lab you can see Linux intrusion detection system started and how many objects and how many source ACL and how many objects are in this access control list database and you can do the cat etc shadow you can see that the operation is not permit you cannot see the shadow password right now and if you want to touch ABC uh, in a bin a directory you can see that operation is not permitted and if you want to uh, remove the modules of the leads you can see that operation is not permitted you can do anything you cannot do you cannot do uh, uh, you can you can do nothing to this uh, uh, kernels right now it, the log will show that somebody the PID and the UID what kinds of users and what kind of process he used to violate this uh, program uh, to violate this uh, cap system modules and finally, we have a summary. Okay, the Leeds project actually is a free software efforts. We have, this is, this Leeds is under the GPL, and we develop this one for free, and we do not have any support right now. So, uh, all these things is by interest, and I, I can, I have to thank many people, <laughs> because uh, without them, there's no any, uh, this cannot go too far right now. Uh, and the leads actually is implement as security modules in the kernel because we talk about the architecture, we show the, the attack and defense, it means that leads can enhance the Linux kernel security in some efforts. Uh, finally, I want to acknowledge you and you take your time to listen to this uh, speech and and I want to thank the lead users and developers, especially the Philip, Philip and and the Steve Camp and all the these users here. And um, I also want to thank the wonderful world of the free software. With the free software, you can do a lot of things. You can get anything you want from the internet. If you do not like it, you can just modify it. So you have all the rights. But with the commercial one. Uh, you have to pay and you cannot do something you want to do so I guess this is a wonderful world of free software with the free software support we can develop very uh, interesting tools to enhance our kernel and I want to thank my employee, employer insurer network which sponsored this trip for me and finally I want to thank StepCon to provide opportunity for me to prevent this present this leads here all right. Any question? <laughs> Thanks. Any question? Oh. Have any of the Linux distributions expressed an interest in Google Lens in their distribution? Uh, there's one distribution already in Lids. There's a uh, uh, in Gadi, this distribution, you can find it on uh, www.linuxsecurity.com. Uh, there's a website, and there's a distribution made by this uh, company. Integration into the Linux kernel program? Is there any, uh, is it being proposed? Plans to propose that? Oh, yeah. In the Linux kernel, the Linux security modules we go into the Linux kernel um, maybe in one or two months but as uh, modules uh, maybe we go we go into the kernel uh, in the future but I don't know if the I would uh, I guess I would surprise uh, I, would, I would surprise this uh, 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 kernel uh, that leads to the Linux but I don't know if he would accept it <laughs> Uh, no, I don't think so right now. What? Any decrease uh, on the performance, right? Yeah. Uh, you're, you're, uh, apparently, whenever you pull a syscall, okay. you are checking some conditions. Yes. And that's uh, open now. Uh, yeah. Uh, for pro performance, um, frankly, I never 
check the performance on this list before, but somebody on the mailing list told me that he had used the server with the lead support and he never saw any performance down uh, in any case. So I guess even if, because the, I, I do not check every system call. Uh, for example, when you open a file, I just check when you open the file. If you read or write a file, I do not check it. I just check at the very first checkpoint. Oh, it, Cisco? Cisco? Cisco. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. Yes, I just check the sys opened. I do not check sys read or sys write. So I guess this will improve the performance. Um, another question. Mm -hmm. Can you use the integrity of the kernel uh -huh. after it's been attacked? So can you detect, uh, let's say somebody attacked your kernel yes. by some unknown method, uh -huh. right? yes. can you verify the integrity of the kernel? Uh, all right, if the leads found somebody trying to attack the kernel, uh, he would, uh, okay, attack the kernel has several methods. The first one is you use modules, and the second one he use the raw IOs, and so right now, all these things have been uh, checked by the leads. So in this case, if leads found somebody trying to do things like that to insert modules kind of things, he would provide the information in the log, just told that uh, if who use what kind of tools to insert or to do what kind of things. So in this case, after leads found this one, he would terminal, terminate all the operations that this program do. So it will not affect the kernel itself. In this case, he, he, he can protect the Linux kernel. So I, uh, in this case, I guess the integrity could be uh, guaranteed. I see. So you just block the known vectors? Yes. Rather yes. Rather than try to verify integrity afterwards? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just turn, everything is just terminal, all this process. Sure. And no? Okay, let's uh, finish this. Thanks for taking your time here. Thanks.